So we've got 11C, which is the last part of chapter 11, uh, which is electric fields. And what you need to be able to do in the first place is actually identify what the different types of field are. So in this case, we've got two radial fields. So obviously there's a uniform field as well, and there are radial fields for electricity and for gravity as well, which we saw in chapter 9. So the radial fields for electri uh, electric fields, you have a positive proton, so a single proton, uh, which is modelled uh, as a sphere, would produce a radial electric field. And then, of course, you've got the electron as well. Same field as the proton, so it has the same charge, uh, also modelled as a sphere. So you've got the two radial fields. Now, the difference is the arrows in the field. The arrows for the positive radial charge go outwards. So if we assume there was a positive charge in the field of the proton, then it would repel and therefore it would go outwards. Uh, and if we assume the same thing, that there was a positive charge in the electron field, then it would attract. So therefore the arrows come towards the electron itself. So these fields are both radial because the field lines that we draw, we draw them along the radius as if it was a sphere. So you can see that the further they go from the charged particle itself, the further away the lines become. And all that represents is the further away you are from the charged particle, the weaker the field will be. So a radial field is specifically the further away from the object, the weaker the field. And in the diagram, you can see that because the field lines are far apart. Now, these are just single fields for the single charges. But if you then were asked what the interaction between those fields would look like, which means if I take the field of one and I move it close to the field of another, how would those two fields interact? We know that opposites when it comes to charges attract and we know that the same charges repel, but what does that mean for the fields themselves? So this one specifically is a proton and electron move close enough that the fields will actually combine somehow, they will interact somehow, and because they're oppositely charged we know they're going to attract. So what happens is the field lines actually join together, they, cross, they come together, they cross over, and the field obviously between the two is positive to negative. You've got the radial field on the outsides because essentially on the outsides of the particles the field isn't that much affected. Okay, but between them, because they're close enough, the field lines actually come together, they combine and it's attractive so they join uh, and it's positive to negative between. For the opposite uh, situation where you have negative and negative or positive and positive, you know that it's going to repel because you know that same charges repel but what does that look like again for the field if you look the field lines actually when they come close enough together they deflect one another so they will not cross if the particles repel so if the two fields are repulsive then the field lines themselves they deflect and they will not cross one another okay so as you can see between they've deflected so that they're not crossing on the outside again similar to this one they're actually the same because it's not affected that much uh, and again the arrows for the electrons are always in towards the electron as if there was positive inside the fields. If you actually look there's a little gap in between there that doesn't have any field lines there will be a point between two fields that are repulsive that if you get the point exactly right then any object within that would experience zero resultant force because they'd be being pulled by the same force either side. It's not that there's no force there, it's just that the resultant is zero because they're experiencing the same force from both directions. And exactly the same for the positive as well. If you bring two radial positive fields together, then they will deflect, they won't cross, and you get that deflection. But again, the arrows are outward for the proton as if it was repelling. One other thing that you need to be able to do if the exam asks you to draw or describe how a field would look if it were stronger than another, then all you say is, well, the stronger the field in the diagram, I draw more field lines. So how do I represent on paper one field being stronger than another? I just, all I do is add more field lines to my diagram. And you could say in words that the field is denser. So there is a higher density of field lines on the diagram. There are more field lines, therefore the field represented must be stronger, which would be represented by a, strong, a greater charge, for example. All right, and that's a stronger radial field. Now you've got uniform fields. It's exactly the same as uniform gravitational field or even a uniform magnetic field, which we'll see in chapter 12. All it means is, if you have a parallel charged plate, which would be positive on one plate and negative on the other, then you would create a field between the two plates. Now, 
the attraction between the two we know comes from the fields of each charge. Because they're opposite, you get that combining of fields, but because the plates are parallel, unlike two charged objects, if you bring the fields together, it wasn't quite parallel, they did join, but it was kind of curved because they weren't parallel, it was just two spherical charges. But if you have two parallel plates, which are charged oppositely, positive for example at the top and negative at the bottom, then the field between them would have parallel field lines. In an exam you'd have to draw at least three parallel lines representing your field and always, always go from positive to negative. It doesn't have to be positive on the top plate, negative on the bottom. They could give you an exam question that was vertical plates, horizontal, at an angle. Just know whichever one is positive and whichever one is negative, the arrows are directed positive to negative. All right, so that's a uniform field. If a particle were to enter that field and the particle was charged, for example, negatively charged particle passing between the two plates, because it's negatively charged, it would be attracted to the positive plate. It would be repelled by the negative plate. So its movement would be towards the positive. As you can see, it would take a curved path because it already came in with an initial velocity horizontally. So it would be curved towards that top or positive plate. And in an exam, you'd say it's attracted to the positive, but the force experienced by the particle is along the field line. So always, always the forces experienced by another object within a field are along the field lines. And just the same as before, if you want to represent a stronger uniform field, all you do is draw more parallel lines between the plates and it represents a stronger uniform field. So by definition, a uniform field is that the strength of the field, so anywhere inside this field, anywhere, an object, charged object, will experience the same force. It doesn't matter where you are in a uniform field, the force experienced on a charged object is the same. Same for gravitation as well. If you're in a gravitational, uniform gravitational field, then it doesn't matter where you are in that uniform field, you will experience the same force. Radial, on the other hand, the further away you are, the weaker the force becomes.